Lewis up to Milford. Steady go in Worcester County, although we may anticipate another day of bridge inspection on Route 90 between Ocean City and Ocean Pines. Coastal Highway, we're good. Good on uh, 589 through the Pines. 113 from Bishopville to Berlin to Snow Hill, okay. NY Comical County, decent go on 50 from Willards to Pittsville to Parsonsburg. Uh, anticipate daytime construction on Route 50 eastbound from Pittsville through Powellville Road all the way to the county line, and they, they, they think they're setting up for that. Uh, business 50 and business 13 in town, usual volume, bypass around Salisbury, good, 50 good to the Bay Bridge. That's your traffic for The Voice Radio Network. Dr. Corey Yeager, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Hey, Bill. Hey, Jessica. Hi. Hey, welcome. We appreciate you checking in this morning. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you got a lot going on. Yeah, I appreciate the I appreciate the time with you all. Yeah, no, absolutely, Dr. Corey Yeager, um, of course, life coach, psychotherapist for NBA's Detroit Pistons. You recently featured on Oprah and Prince Harry's The Me You Can't See on Apple TV. Uh, man, you uh, you're a big deal. You got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Jessica. Tell my wife I'm a big deal. You are a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, look, you got a new book out. We'll talk about that in a sec. It's called How Am I Doing? 40 Conversations to Have with Yourself. Um, first off, how did you get – first off, give us a rundown exactly what you do uh, as far as a psychotherapist. You know, Talk to me about what's involved in that and how you got involved with the Detroit Pistons. Yeah, so – Coach Dwayne Casey, who's a head coach here in Detroit, brought me in uh, five years ago um, after working with DeMar DeRozan in Toronto. Um, and, and if you recall, DeMar came out with a tweet late night one night saying that he was dealing with some depression issues. And Coach Casey was close with DeMar, still is to this day, um, but said, I didn't know that he was struggling with that. So Case said, he brought me in and he said, you know, Doc, I don't have the chops or understanding to deal with this element of what these young players are dealing with, um, but I know that you are and you're good at it, so I, he brought me in to do the work. Um, I, I have to braggadocious, but I have to say that Case has said, hey, the Pistons, hire, one of the best hires that they made was bringing me in. They brought me in before um, Commissioner Silver mandated that every team have a psychological support mechanism um, so there's a little level of pride that, that I have in working for Case that he was proactive and ahead of the curve. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm working with all of our players, our front office, to be supported therapeutically, um, to build trust and, and, and a mechanism that they can turn to um, that is with them on a steady basis. I travel on the road. I'm on every road trip. I'm at every practice, at every, every game on the sideline, and just there to be a mechanism for our players and our staff. Were you a big Pistons fan before before that, you know? And then how is it like traveling with the team? That's got to be pretty cool. I mean, take a, take away your job for a minute, but just being on the road with the Pistons. Right, that's is incredible. It, it is cool. It's cool until you get stuck on the tarmac and you get into a city at 4 a.m. and you have a 10 o'clock shoot-around and a game that evening. <laughs> right. It's cool until those moments ensue. Um, but it has absolutely been a dream of mine for the last 20 years. I wanted to get into the world of athletics and couple that with the psychological framework that I, ha that I have and hold. Um, it has been a, really a dream come true. I absolutely love it um, and would not, if I could pick a job, this, I'm doing the job that, that I would choose in my life and it never, ever feels like I'm working. Yeah, wow. It feels like I'm hanging out. With a ton of my, my nephews every day. I'm <laughs> hanging out with my nephews and supporting them. Man, that's great. That's great. Um, look, I, I got so many questions, uh, you know, but, but, but I also want to touch on uh, Kanye West a little bit. Uh, because, you know, you are uh, an, an expert and, you know, you, you're very involved with mental mental health. So, well, yeah, you're the doctor. You're the doctor. So, you know, <laughs> want to ask you a couple questions. But, you know, um, so uh, as far as, like, mental health goes, just real quick. Can, how important is mental health? I mean, I know how, how I feel, but, you know, in today's society, 2022, you know, how important would you tell someone who has no clue mental health? Yeah, I think mental health, mental wellness has become extremely important. That doesn't mean that it hasn't always been, but it hasn't been something that has been on the forefront of thought. Um, I think in the last number of years, things have moved in such a way 
um, that this younger generation is demanding that we discuss and engage and support mental wellness yeah. in a way that we haven't previously. Um, I think it's extremely important. It's very similar to physical health. Um, if we find someone that has diabetes that we know, we'll support them. Hey, what's the A1C number? Is you, are you taking insulin? What are your numbers? Make sure you're eating right. So we'll support them in their physical health journeys. But if someone presents with um, anxiety or depression, what we'll do is kind of shy away because we'll throw our hands up like, well, I don't know anything about that. Well, you didn't used to know anything about diabetes, but you learned. Right. right. So how can we learn in such a way that says, I'm not trying to be a doctor, because when you're supporting your friend that has diabetes, you're not trying to be a doctor. You're trying to support them in their journey of wellness. Um, I think that mental wellness is quite the same. We just have yet to normalize the conversation. I think the book, How Am I Doing, is part of that process, that iterative process, to begin to normalize mental wellness. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, it's so important. I, I just can't stress enough, especially, you know, with these younger, the younger generation didn't, you know, they're growing up a different way, you know, than we did. And with social media and with the way, you know, technology and the way the world is, I think what you do uh, in your field is so important. And, you know, talking about mental health is, is one of the most important things. Um, so let's get right into Kanye West. I, I'll, you know, we've been talking about this on our morning show you know, everybody's been kind of following the story, you know, what's been going on with him and him losing everything and all his endorsements and his Adidas and, you know, all, all the uh, uh, the partnerships that he had, et cetera. Um, gosh, I, I mean, you know, there, you got one side saying that all oh, this was all planned out and, you know, here he is, a, a, a black billionaire being able to take control of everything, take everything back. But then you got, you know, obviously, you know, another side saying he's crazy, you know, he's lost it. He deserves to lose all that stuff, the hateful things that he said. Um, what are your thoughts on Kanye? And, I mean, is he done or, or is he just going to go away? Or, or are, we, are we going to, you know, hear, I don't know. I mean, like, kind of give us your, your take on Kanye West and what's going on with him. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see Kanye just going away. Um, right. Kanye's got things to say, and if you listen to Kanye, if you just slow down and listen, some of the things that Kanye says makes you say, oh, I haven't thought about it that way. Man, huh, that, that's interesting. One of the things that I think occurs is that people that are genius, and I would categorize Kanye as a genius, that oftentimes they're troubled, right? That, that, that genius may be part of that troubling process. I'm not saying that's the case with Kanye, but it could be. Um, I think one thing that we have to avoid and get away from, and I think we do what much too much of in our in our world, is that we have become pop culture diagnoses, right? That, oh, this guy must have this, or this guy must be that. But they don't, if you ask people to define what anxiety is, they don't know that. They don't know what the difference between anxiety and sadness is. They don't know the difference in depression and, and this or that. So giving people their space, um, although there's going to be moments, Kanye says some things that are, are usually hurtful to groups of people, um, that's a struggle that he's got to get through and those around him have to get through. Um, but some, to some degree, we have to allow people the space to help themselves and find the help that they need. Um, I could spend I, I could spend an hour with you uh, because of time. Uh, real quick, in you know thirty to sixty seconds, tell us about the book. Uh, how am I doing? Forty conversations to have with yourself. Um, you know what inspired you to write the book, and uh, what's it about? Yeah, I was inspired to write the book because I was finding in my therapy that I was asking these questions of folks. Then I began to ask myself, and I came to the idea of maybe I could use these questions. Um, to, in a book format to allow people the opportunity to get to better know themselves. The overarching larger question is, how am I doing? And then we have 40 bite-sized conversations I ask people to have with themselves that will help you get to better know and be more acquainted with who you are, how you came to be who you are, and where you're headed. Um, and recognizing that we get to control a lot of our destiny, even though we may have struggles, that doesn't mean that I can't control where I'm headed um, in a certain way. So that's what the book is focused on, and I hope people get an opportunity to engage with it. Nice. If people want to pick up the book, how can they do that? Is it everywhere? 
it's everywhere. It's the Amazon is the is the spot that most people are grabbing it. Um, but Barnes and Noble, um, you can find it. If you, you Google Dr. Corey Yeager, how am I doing? You'll find it everywhere. And you can find me on Instagram, uh, uh, TikTok, Facebook at Dr. Corey Yeager. Um, so it's everywhere. Oh, you're on TikTok, huh? You, you up there with the Detroit Pistons? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> God. Yeah, you up there with it's the Pistons crazy. doing some dances? Come on now. Uh, I am. I uh, was, nice. We just did some videos I was on the other day. I love yep. it. I love it. I definitely have to follow you. I have to check you out. Dr. Corey Yeager, life coach, psychotherapist for the Detroit Pistons, now author. Man, thank you so much for checking in. We appreciate it. Love to have you back on and spend an hour with you. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Every Sunday morning.